Portland State University awards honorary degrees to acknowledge individuals who have achieved outstanding scholarship or artistic accomplishments or performed distinguished public service during their lifetime. I'm so very, very pleased today to present an honorary doctoral degree of humane letters to George Yoshio Nakata, an international businessman, oral historian, and United States veteran. Mr. Nakata earned a business administration degree with honors from Lewis and Clark College in 1957. In 2018, he was awarded the Order of the Rising Sun with Silver Rays for his distinguished contributions to the advancement of Japan. Mr. Nakata was born in Portland and grew up in the Japantown section of Northwest Portland, a thriving community settled by Japanese immigrants and their children. His family leased and operated the Pomona Hotel on Northwest 2nd Avenue between Cooch and Burnside Streets. In 1942, Mr. Nakata and his family were imprisoned in the Portland Assembly Center. They were later transferred to the Minidoka War Relocation Center Camp, spending three years in the Idaho desert. They were among 120,000 Japanese immigrants and Japanese Americans imprisoned by the United States government during World War II after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Once the concentration camps closed in the mid-1940s, Mr. Nakata and his family returned to Portland and regained their footing. He served in the U.S. Army with top secret clearance at the 7th Army Headquarters in Germany. Mr. Nakata became a successful international business executive with Japanese companies and with the Port of Portland, establishing Far East offices for the port. Mr. Nakata has an ongoing desire to have the American public better understand the racial injustices in the imprisonment of thousands of Japanese during World War II. He provides an extraordinary service to Oregonians by sharing stories about his experience in the internment camps, so we never forget this shameful chapter in American history. Let me express my sincere thanks to Portland State University for this honorary PhD degree in Humane Letters. I also wish to thank the School of Social Work for their ongoing support. America, this great land of ours, the land of the free, proudly stands for equality and diversity. Yet those memories of my spending four years behind barbed wire fences and guard towers will not simply fade away. The reason that I was incarcerated, I happen to be Japanese American. Yes, the hazard of war. During World War II, some 120,000 Japanese were incarcerated and imprisoned into 10 American concentration camps. A decision based on racial prejudice, the hysteria of war and the lack of political leadership. Japanese residing in the Portland area were rounded up and placed initially into the Portland Assembly Center for the summer of 1942, then moved on to more permanent Minidoka camp for the duration of the war, an untold story for the most part. There were some 9,600 Japanese inmates imprisoned into this Minidoka camp, located in the wilderness of Southern Idaho amongst a sea of sagebrush, a harsh environment for those of us accustomed to the greenery of Western Oregon. As a young boy, I had to adjust to this extremely dry, dusty, desolate area, living in tar-papered, uninsulated barracks. The Minidoka complex consisted of some 44 blocks, each block with 12 barracks of six units each. There is a mess hall and a laundry room in the center of each block. As prisoners, we lined up for everything. We lined up to eat. We lined up to do our laundry. We lined up to take a shower. I even lined up once a week to get our two rolls of toilet paper. The absence of freedom, the lack of social justice. It was part of our daily lives. But through ex extraordinary inner resolve, the Japanese prisoners made this stark concentration camp into a livable community. We built walkways in front of our barracks for safe passage to the mess halls. We converted these local lava embedded clay to produce some fresh vegetables. We built some makeshift playgrounds, even a baseball diamond, and dug a hole near block 30 to serve as our swimming pool. Yes, we had pledged allegiance to the American flag as we built two high schools and two grade schools, pledge allegiance to the flag while looking out the window 
at the barbed bar wire fences and at the guard towers. We roamed the sagebrush in search of the manzanita greasewood, which we would bring back, debark, and make some small memento of Minidoka. In 1943, several thousand young Nisei Japanese volunteered for the U.S. Army. They formed the 442nd Regiment of Combat Team that served bravely and honorably in Africa, Italy, France, and in Germany. And as the most highly decorated unit of its size and duration, with over 9,600 Purple Hearts and awarded over 21 Medals of Honor. During those World War II years, Japanese Americans spent four years in these very harsh concentration camps, stripped of our freedom and our constitutional rights. Japanese American citizens treated as enemy aliens. An indelible and shameful stretch in our history, whereas the United States of America forgot its own Declaration of Independence that pledged that all men are created equal. Let me specifically congratulate you graduating students as you contribute directly now to the world of social work. Today, I will continue to tell my story to remind Americans of the importance of social justice, that our unique and multicultural country must always respect the equal rights of all of our citizens. Your future work is very important. Your dedication to bettering the future of communities, of marginalized communities, I know that your efforts will be rewarding as you definitely will make a difference. My story is part of our history, mostly an untold history, tucked away, but never ever to be forgotten or to fade away. <laughs>